Hey friend, how are you today? So we are here to talk about one thing that can help you lose weight faster. Are you ready? I think you're really going to love this episode. Um, I hope that you will find peace in the freedom that this one thing will offer and how it will not only help you draw closer to God, it will help you release Maybe some things that are keeping you stuck in your journey. Um, it will help you remove unhealthy mindsets. And I honestly believe it is going to help you build healthy habits that you're going to pass down to your kids, who will pass them down to your their kids. And this will affect you for generations to come in the best way. Stay tuned. Hey, sister, welcome to Her Weight Loss Mindset. Are you sick of trying diet after diet and not losing weight? Do you wish you could find easy meal prep ideas for your family so you're not standing in the kitchen yet again wondering what everyone is going to eat for dinner that's in line with your goals? Do you spend hours Googling easy workouts but then have no time to do them because your motivation only goes so far? Hey there friend, I'm Lindy Slaybaugh, Christian fitness and nutrition coach, encourager and friend. I gained 100 pounds in my late 20s and struggled for years to get it off. Seven years ago, I found a basic system that works and has helped me lose over 90 of those pounds. I've been working with women in online fitness and nutrition ever since. In this podcast, I'll teach you how to lose weight in a way that honors God without obsessing about the scale and meal plan and prep for your family and follow a macro-based plan that allows you to eat the foods you love while you reach your goals. It's time to give God your health journey and watch him make you new from the inside out. You've got this, sister. Now go grab your pre-workout or your third coffee like me, and let's chat. Hey there, I want to invite you to join my free community. This month, we will be focusing on gratitude given the upcoming holiday season, and I'll be sharing recipes and quick workouts you can do to prep for turkey and peanut butter pie. Click on the Join My Free Community link below and answer the questions to join us. So if you're ready to take one step further and just want to jump into your own personal journey, join the Weight Loss Mentorship. We are doing a 90-day deep dive into unhealthy mindsets, triggers. We're creating macro plans and intentional movement practices that you can implement into your life as we move into uh, walking in the purpose that God has planned for us. It is so hard to walk in purpose when we're focused on our weight or body image or areas of struggle. So join the weight loss mentorship and let's work on your own personal journey and create a custom plan for you. I am excited to chat with you today. This This conversation, this topic is always a little tricky for me. Talking about my sexual assault uh, and infertility is always uncomfortable. It can sometimes bring up some things that I don't necessarily want to face, but I really feel like it's important for us to talk today about forgiveness. And you maybe came into this episode and you're like, oh yeah, one thing I can do to lose weight faster. But to be quite honest, holding on to unforgiveness or bitterness in our heart It prevents our body from truly healing and allowing us to take a step of freedom towards what God has planned for us. I was 19 years old and I found myself at a party. I was at a Christian college and I had a really good friend, him and his roommates threw a party one night and I drank too much. I was high. Um, I was making all kinds of bad decisions and I asked this person who was like a brother to me. He traveled home with me from college. My parents took him out to dinner and so I felt very comfortable asking him if I could sleep in his bed. So I passed out and in the morning woke up and he was assaulting me and I went home that next morning and told my roommate about it and she basically told me it was my fault. I was drunk and high. What do you expect? And so I didn't talk about my trauma for over 15 years. It wasn't really until I got involved in network marketing that we were encouraged to invest in daily personal development. So I started reading Breaking Free by Beth Moore. And my plan at that point when I opened that book was to forgive my dad. We had been estranged for, I think at that point it was six or seven years. And I really wanted to move through that because I had been reading the Bible and I know what God says about forgiveness and unforgiveness. And so I really just wanted to heal through that part of of my journey in my in my life. And as I was reading through that book, I started having all of these sights and smells and sounds that came back from my assault that night. And it took me to the floor. And I started to recount all of these memories and things that happened that night. 
And it became a healing journey of forgiveness, not only for my roommate who told me it was my fault and the person who attacked me, but I had to really lean into self-forgiveness. You know, I carried that burden for so long and realizing it, looking back, within 12 months of my assault, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. And within a few years from that, I gained a uh, 100 pounds and it is like hindsight 2020. We always we always hear that, but like until you're facing trauma and reliving it and working through forgiveness, we can't really walk into the freedom and healing that our body requires in order to, you know, be a truly healthy person. So, last Sunday, we had a guest preacher at our church from a local college university and he's working with teens and it's just a really incredible um, organization that they have uh, through this secular Christian or secular college. And he said, he I don't think he quoted the guy who said it, but he said, bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping it affects the other guy. And he talked to us about the story in Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through 35. And it was the story of the king who called his servant in. Um, he had owed him in today's money. It would basically be like millions of dollars. And the man begged for forgiveness. Um, the king had threatened to take his wife and his children and put him in prison. And this man got on his knees and begged for forgiveness from the king. And so the king granted him forgiveness. He wiped away his entire debt. So we read then in the story that as the man left the palace, like, not long after, a servant of his that owed him money asked him for, um, you know, some grace there. And he wouldn't give it. Well, people heard about this and went and reported to the king. And the king was furious. So he took away everything that this man had and put him in, in prison. And isn't that a testament to God's grace for us? We read in scripture that, you know, the one of the disciples was asking, I think it was Peter, was asking God, Jesus, like, how many times do I forgive him? Because in the Old Testament, we read that it was three times. So he asked him, was it seven times? And Jesus said, 70 times seven. And I think, like, putting that into perspective that none of us deserves Christ's freedom. He went to the cross for us because we couldn't do it on our own. We're all born sinners. And really having that perspective of in order to forgive someone else, it pushes you to spiritual growth. It leads to spiritual maturity because you're leaning on Jesus, right? You're asking him, Lord, I need to forgive this person and I really don't want to. I can promise you I did not want to forgive the person that assaulted me. I did not want to forgive my roommate. I really didn't even want to forgive my dad when I was, you know, reading the book about him in the first place. It wasn't something that I wanted to do or even felt comfortable doing, but I had that Holy Spirit conviction that if I don't offer forgiveness to someone else, Jesus says in his word, he will not offer forgiveness to us. We reap what we sow, right? We get what we give. And so in order to move on to your healing in your mind, in your body that will allow you to reach your weight loss goal faster, you've got to pray and ask God if you have any seeds of bitterness or resentment or unforgiveness in your heart, because this is going to be key. In month one of the weight loss mentorship, we really dig through traumas and we're learning to recognize triggers, lies, where they came from. And then we're praying over forgiveness if it came from someone else, if it came from ourselves. And then saying, okay, Lord, I'm working through this forgiveness. Can you give me a verse that's going to combat this lie with the truth? So when we forgive people who don't necessarily deserve it, maybe they haven't asked for it, uh, maybe they've passed on and you don't have the opportunity to have that conversation, that's okay. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Okay. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is for you. There is spiritual freedom and the enemy flees when we operate in a heart posture of forgiveness. He doesn't want us living a life free of this. He wants us holding bitterness and resentment. And that can come in our marriages, in our families. It can come from people who have hurt us in the past. It can come from something somebody said 25 years ago, maybe like me that you'd push down and you don't even remember. I always think of the Psalm, it's Psalm 139, 23 and 24, and it says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When we can use that verse as a daily prayer, God will reveal some things to you. 
He will show you the people in your life that maybe you thought you have healed from, maybe a trauma or unforgiveness, but he might remind you that you need to do a little bit uh, deeper work there. And so I promise you, if you work towards forgiveness, if you start making a list, what I'm doing with my mentorship clients is we write the lie in one column, we write who it came from in the other, we're praying over forgiveness for that person, and then we're combating that lie with truth. So maybe start to recognize if you're around certain people and you maybe get a little snippy or defensive, maybe that person could be a trigger in your life. Maybe something has happened that is creating a barrier for you between uh, forgiveness, healing, and trauma. So if you want to lose weight faster, one thing we're going to do as we move into this month of gratitude, Thanksgiving, we're going to talk about forgiveness joining my free community. We're going to work through some of these things. This is not always easy work. It's messy. It's uncomfortable. But I promise you, if you especially are a believer and you're holding unforgiveness, Christ says, I am not going to forgive you. And none of us deserve his grace, right? Like, can we agree on that? We should be repenting every single day. So this pastor last Sunday gave a really cool uh, visual, and it basically has If you picture like a diagram on your piece of paper, at the top you write sin, and under that you write wound. And then to the right of that you would write pride, and then under that you would write bitterness. So sin, another person's sin can create a wound in you. And our pride keeps us from healing and forgiving, and so we build bitterness. And so in those moments, we must repent because that leads us to forgiveness. And then there's another one. You know, someone else's sin might be the issue, but it could often be an offense or an unmet expectation that someone that you had for someone in your life. And instead of dealing with that and communicating it properly, it builds pride. We know pride is the downfall of man. Pride leads to bitterness. Bitterness. We must repent from this so that we can receive forgiveness. So I really want to encourage you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal some people in your life maybe you haven't healed from or forgiven. This is hard work, but I promise you, if you do this one thing, you are going to lose weight faster because your body will release that trauma and something happens. It's just amazing what happens in our brains when we allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in us that only he can do. You are never going to get to do this on your own. It is going to require the strength of Christ living inside of you. He doesn't need you to do this on your own. He just needs you to recognize that you need help here. So Holy Spirit, fill us today. Lead us to what you have for us and show us any seeds of unforgiveness or bitterness that we're holding against someone else, Father, and give us the strength and courage to face that and recognize that and lay down that that trouble and that struggle at the foot of the cross, Father. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the work that you continue to do in our lives. We know sometimes it's messy, it's not fun, Lord, but you are taking us through this journey so that we can be spiritually mature in you and be the example to other people in our lives. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Hey, sweets. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, would you take 30 seconds and share it with a friend who may also want to lose weight without all the dieting and restriction? Also, please leave a quick review for the show on Apple Podcasts. It lights me up to know this podcast is helping you. Okay, it's time to go make a protein shake and get my sweat on. No more standing in the kitchen waiting for motivation to appear. I'll meet you back next week for another episode. Be blessed.